Ladies and gentlemen, New Jersey Institute of Technology welcomes you to this today's commencement ceremony. At this time, we ask that you silence your cell phones and please refrain from any disruptive behavior during this academic celebration. Please be advised that this ceremony contains smoke, strobe effects, and loud and sudden noises. For the unfortunate, unlikely, excuse me, for the unlikely event of an emergency, please take a moment to locate the exit nearest you. Please take your seats as the processional will begin momentarily. Let the commencement begin. Ladies and gentlemen, the candidates for doctoral degrees, please welcome New Jersey Institute of Technology's Class of 2023. <laughs> Newark College of Engineering, founded in 1919. College of Science and Liberal Arts, founded in 1982. Ying Wu College of Computing, founded in 2001. Martin Tuckman School of Management, founded in 1988. Hillier College of Architecture and Design, founded in 1973.
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the university officers, deans, and honored guests of the university, followed by interim provost Dr. Atom Dewan, this year's Mace Bearer, Senior Vice Provost for Academic Affairs, Dr. Edwin Howe, and the President of NJIT, Dr. Tech Lim. Good afternoon. This is a very special event of your life, so let's, let's make it more energetic. Good afternoon. And I wanted to say it again that this is very special commencement uh, ceremony because this is about the PhD graduates. So congratulations to the class of 2023 you know, receiving PhD degree, which is a milestone uh, achievement of your life. So congratulations, everyone. So welcome uh, members of the faculty and distinguished guests. As interim provost of New Jersey Institute of Technology, I hereby call the commencement ceremony to order. Please rise, and you are already standing. If you are able to, uh, as everyone is, uh, posting uh, for the posting of colors by the members of the Air Force ROTC Detachment 490 and singing of the national anthem sung by Debbie Ann Spence. Please remove your hats. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light 
what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the hope of the brave. Please be seated. Honored guests, faculty, friends, families, and graduates, I'm pleased to welcome you all to the 2023 NJIT PhD commencement and hooding ceremony. We hope We hope you will enjoy the ceremony and remember it fondly for many years to come because this is a very special event for it. Because this is a, a special day for all of our graduates, we ask that you stay until the event concludes so that everyone will feel honored by your presence. I would like to thank Daniel Mottern, Graduate Student Association President, who is our class crier today. Also, let me now introduce the additional members of the stage party. Please hold your applause until everyone is introduced. Co-Vice Chair, Board of Trustees, Ms. Norma Clayton, President of NJIT, Dr. Tech Lim, NJIT alum, Board of Trustee Emeritus, and today's commencement speaker, Vincent L. DiCaprio, class of 2023 candidate, and today's commencement student speaker, Dr. Audrey Bianti Kellogg, Noark College of Engineering Dean, Moshe Kam, College of Science and Liberal Art Dean, Kevin Belfield, Martin Tuckman, School of Management Dean, Oya Tuckle, Yingwu College of Computing Dean, Craig Gortzman, Vice President for Development and Alumni Relation, Dr. Kenneth Alexa, Jr., Office of the President, Chief of Staff, Katie Hagman, Interim Senior Vice Provost for Academic Affairs and Policies, and today's Mace Bearer, Dr. Edwin Howe, Vice Provost for Graduate Studies, Dr. Sotherios Giavras, Newark College of Engineering Associate Dean for Research and Graduate Studies, 
Dr. Matthew Bender, College of Science and Liberal Arts, Associate Dean for Graduate Education and Research, Dr. Linda Cummings, Martin Tuckman School of Management, Associate Dean, Dr. Shanti Gopalakrishnan, Martin Tuckman School of Management, Assistant Dean, Dr. Melody Gobble, Hillier College of Architecture and Design, PhD Program Coordinator and Associate Dean, Dr. Hyojin Kim, Electrical and Computer Engineering Associate Professor, Dr. Hugh Guan. There also is a very important group who helped each graduate reach his milestone, and that group is the members of the faculty. These dedicated professionals have provided you with valuable classroom instructions and have helped shape your intellectual growth in research labs, in the field, and in the community. They have served as teachers, mentors, and role models collaborating with you in the pursuit of academic excellence, achievement, and preparation for what lies ahead of you, be it further study, uh, entry into the workforce, or some other post-commencement adventure. Would all the faculty please rise to be recognized? Thank you. Please be seated. I now call upon uh, our Dean of College of Science and Liberal Arts, Dr. Kevin Belfield. Thank you, Provost Duan. So I'm honored to be here to recognize the class of 2023. I would first like to thank the Gonfalon Bearers. Our Gonfalon Bearers carry the Gonfalons. They're selected by the respective deans for their scholarship and citizenship. So uh, please join me in giving them a round of applause. So it's now my pleasure to, uh, to welcome today's student speaker, Audrey Biondi Kellogg, soon to be Dr. Kellogg. Uh, She'll be receiving the PhD degree in biology as part of the class of 2023. Uh, so for, I'd like to have the teleprompter person pause a little bit. So when one introduces a PhD student, it's very difficult to do that without acknowledging their PhD advisor. As we know, your PhD mentors are your, your professional, your academic parents. Uh, and there are family trees, formal family trees that outline that. And in many cases, they're your surrogate parents. And so I'd like to recognize Dr. Brooke Flamang. Brooke, can you just stand up for a second? Okay. okay. Now we can roll the script. So I just thought that was important to recognize. Fabulous, fabulous mentor, as all of you are. Uh, so Dr. Kellogg uh, is a double NGIT alum, formerly a double, but really a triple. She earned her bachelor's degree in biology in the, the federated program, the joint program with Rutgers Newark, took many classes here at NGIT, did research here, and then she went on to earn her MS degree in biology here at NGIT, uh, and now the doctorate. So in recognition for her outstanding creativity and research, she received the College of Science and Liberal Arts Outstanding Graduate Student Award in 2019. She then received an Office of Naval Research Research Enterprise Internship in 2021. If that weren't enough, uh, she applied for and received the Department of Defense Science, Mathematics, and Research for Transformation Scholarship, the SMART Scholarship, in 2022. Audrey stands out as an exemplary scholar with incredible ingenuity and foresight that will make her a successful scientist. Dr. Kellogg will begin her career at the Naval Undersea Warfare Center. So please join me today in providing a warm welcome for Dr. Kellogg. Thank you, Dean Belfield. Good morning, President Lim, Board of Trustees, faculty, family, friends, and the class of 2023. Congratulations on your graduation, and thank you for allowing me to be a part of it. 
My name is Dr. Audrey Biondi Kellogg, and it is such an incredible honor to have been selected as this year's class speaker. When preparing for this speech, I was talking with some of my classmates to brainstorm ideas, and they told me how they always dreamed of being class speaker at a graduation ceremony. I thought this was kind of interesting because I don't think I ever saw myself in this role. You see, I was the kid in school who got pulled out of English class to go to speech therapy instead. From kindergarten until sixth grade, I spent my, sixth, my English period in a separate classroom practicing the pronunciation of R's, W's, and my overall speech canter to prevent stuttering and stumbling over words. As you can imagine, speaking in front of large groups of people terrifies me. When I began my graduate school career, I didn't realize how many talks you have to give as a scientist. In my dream world, I thought I was gonna be able to just work in a lab all day, but I quickly learned one of the most important aspects of science is communicating your findings to the public. This was my biggest challenge that was an uphill battle the whole way through. Starting right from the first week of my master's when I had to give a presentation in my grant writing class, it was my first time giving a talk on my proposed research and my first time giving a talk with a professor who interrupted and asked questions mid-presentation. As a student who has to highly focus on speech tempo and pronunciation, this threw me for a loop. I was so excited to propose my ideas of building biologically inspired fish robots, but the professor quickly shot down the idea saying it was too far out there to be funded. I began to stutter over my words trying to explain why it was valid, but I couldn't get one full sentence out. It was just incoherent stuttering that the professor took as me not understanding the foundations of my research, and she honed in on that. I did the most embarrassing thing you could think of. I cried in front of all my new peers, and then I ran out of the classroom and I hid in the bathroom. I called my mom from the bathroom and I told her what happened and how I didn't think I was cut out for the competitive nature of academia and I was gonna quit the program. She didn't even entertain the idea. She told me to get up off that bathroom floor and to go back into that classroom with my head held high. You see, my parents are really strong people. My parents are small business owners. They kept our family business alive through every hardship imaginable, the 2008 financial crisis, COVID, family medical crises, and they never took one day off. They're the type of people who can adapt in turbulent times. They are resilient. My parents were not gonna let me give up on my dreams because one person didn't see the value in my project. After my master's, I applied for the PhD program here at NJIT, but I didn't rank high enough for a TA line. The biology department only had two open lines and I ranked third. I had that immediate fear that my grant writing professor was right. Maybe my proposed research was too far out there to be funded. Part of me accepted that I was most likely not gonna be able to continue onto a doctorate without this funding, but the other part of me wanted to continue my research so badly, so I applied for every funding line imaginable. I was awarded a TA line by Dean Belfield, who told me my research was cutting edge and who's excited to see where it was gonna go. During the first year of my PhD, when I was applying for grants, I played it safe. I took the advice I received from my grant writing professor during my master's, and I cut the robotic aspect of my research. I didn't receive one grant or award my first year. I was feeling pretty defeated when the results were announced that spring. I had that overwhelming urge to quit again. But my PI, Dr. Brooke Lemang, sat me down and asked me why I wasn't including my robotic model in my grants. I explained I was worried that it might be too far out there to be funded. My PI, she has this really warm nature to her. She's incredibly kind and caring, but she's also so smart it's terrifying. She told me, well, now you know the grant results of not including it. Next application cycle, write your grants including all your ideas, even the ones you're afraid are too far out there. The second year of my PhD, I rewrote my grant applications, including my robotic model, and I received every grant I applied for. I received the highest funded scholarship available to PhD students, the Department of Defense Smart Scholarship, to continue this research. I learned a few things that spring that I would like to share as my wrap-up advice. First, believe in yourself, which is always much easier said than done. Academia is intimidating. You constantly feel like everyone around you knows better. But at some point you have to realize you're just as brilliant if you are here. Secondly, your PI is almost always right, which I know you hate to hear. I can confidently say that I wouldn't have made this far in my field without Brooke. Brooke, you are the best. You have answered my phone calls during labor. You go out, you go above and beyond for all of your students, and I would not be here without you. Third, sorry, a little out of it. Third, don't give up. If I can go from the girl who cried in front of all of her peers the first week of her master's to a research scientist for the Navy in the span of five years, you can truly do anything. You really just have to believe in yourself, follow your PI's advice, and don't quit. Thank you.
Thank you, Dr. Biondi Kellogg. Thank you very much for your inspiring words. Uh, at this time, I'd like to invite my colleague, Dean Moshe Kam from the Newark College of Engineering to the podium. Moshe, please. Thank you, Dean Belfield. Uh, I'm, of course, very pleased to see all of you, our PhD graduates, but in addition, it is great to see so many members of your families and so many of your friends. Some of you, family and friends, came just from across town. Some of you came from across the globe. However, no matter how far you travel to join us today, we greet you warmly. Your presence means a great deal to our graduating students and to us, and it is an honor to share this space with you and with them as we celebrate their remarkable accomplishments. Welcome. I now have the very pleasant duty to introduce our commencement speaker, the an esteemed NJIT alumnus, Dr. Vincent DiCaprio. Dr. DiCaprio is an independent consultant in the management of life science businesses and a partner of Perception Medical, a medical device development company. He also serves as an advisor for product development for Footbridge Medical, a company engaged in the development of orthopedic products. Earlier, he was president, CEO, and vice chair of Viteris, a drug delivery technology company, and prior to Viteris, he was for 23 years a member of the leadership team at Beckton, Dickinson and Company, also known as BD. BD, you may know it, it is a well-known global medical technology company where Dr. DiCaprio served as senior vice president, chief technology officer, and president of BD's worldwide vascular access business. Dr. DiCaprio has been engaged in the development and commercialization of several medical devices, including insulin delivery systems, interventional radiology products, and vascular access devices. He is a member of the College of Fellows of the American Institute of Medical and Biological Engineers, AIMBE. He served actually on AIMBE's board of directors as chair of the industry council. He also served as a member of NJIT's board of trustees and on the industrial advisory boards of MIT's Center for Biomedical Engineering, Johns Hopkins University's Bioengineering Department, and the Georgia Institute of Technology Petit Institute. Dr. DiCaprio holds a Bachelor of Science degree in Electrical Engineering from the Newark College of Engineering, and Master of Science and Doctor of Philosophy degrees in Bioengineering from the Polytechnic Institute of New York. Please join me in giving a warm welcome to NJIT graduate and our commencement speaker, Dr. Vincent DiCaprio. Thank you, Dr. Kahn. How do you like the red robes? Well, as my mother would say to me many years ago when I was dressed particularly nicely, and now my inspirational and lovely wife, Mary Lou, once in a while tells me, you look nice today. <laughs> Good afternoon. And before I say anything, I want to express my sincerest congratulations to all our new PhDs. I know this has been a long haul for you. To get where you are today, you worked hard over long hours, and I'll bet often wondering just where this would lead you. And, as in my case, was it, will it be worth it? Let me assure you, your PhD experience at NJIT has imbued you with qualities and skill beyond the technology that's the core subject matter of which you've chosen to pursue your research and eventually thesis. A number of years ago, I came across an article in the Harvard Business Review describing the desirable qualities of a corporate CEO. It described how the experience of pursuing a PhD degree provided 
outstanding and very relevant training for future CEOs. Just think about what you've gone through and accomplished aside from acquiring a deep expertise in your chosen subject matter. Chances are you have pursued an original, perhaps innovative idea. You've backed your idea up with evidence. You've defended your idea against tough critique and communicated your findings so as to inform others who may be in a position to use your work to influence thought and actions for the betterment of mankind. Now that, in a nutshell, is called leadership. And so by obtaining this degree today, you've put yourself in a position of potential leadership. And mark my words, at some point in your future, chances are you will be called to lead. If and when that opportunity comes along, you will be prepared to step up to the challenge, not solely because of your expertise in your field, but also because of the skills you have acquired during the process of becoming a PhD. So my talk to you today is urging you to look beyond the PhD beyond the technical knowledge you've acquired, I'll try to offer you some advice on helping you make that societal impact that so many of you hope to have within your future careers. Think of it as focusing for the next few minutes on the pH in your PhD degree. And I don't mean the chemistry pH, I mean the philosophy part. Let me explain. Soon you'll have conferred upon you the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. Although I would wager that none of you here today have actually chosen philosophy as their field. But where does this degree designation come from? When I received my PhD in bioengineering many years ago, I was asked by the school's administration at the time if I preferred to wear a hood with the colors of engineering, orange, or philosophy, which I believe is dark blue or deep purple. Now, I thought that's odd, but I chose the blue color simply because I thought it was cool. And certainly, none of my friends were philosophers. This, however, caused me to do some research into why, after nine or so years of studying engineering, I was now allowed to be a philosopher. Well, the PhD degree designation I learned is derived from the two Greek roots, philo, meaning love, and sophos, meaning wisdom or knowledge. So a PhD is a lover of knowledge. I thought, wow, is that me? Now that notion harkens back to the Greek philosophers who are individuals engaged in many lines of thought, including the sciences, the arts, and social thought. That understanding was also captured later during the Renaissance when the great artists were also scientists, engineers, architects, musicians, poets, etc., on and on. Just look at the notebook of Leonardo da Vinci. It contains all sorts of art studies, mechanical innovations, architecture studies, and many other studies. Today, the term Renaissance man is meant to describe a truly erudite individual, capable of engaging in thought and conversation on just about anything, a lover of knowledge. So I'm here to encourage you to be a true lover of knowledge. And it is that advice that I believe will very much increase your chances of success in your chosen careers. Popular thought often characterizes a PhD as a sort of super specialist in their field and not much else. I've heard some say that a PhD is someone who knows more and more about less and less. Or it stands for piled higher and deeper. I'm sure you've heard that. Yet throughout my career, I've had the good fortune to meet many PhDs who have emerged as top leaders in their fields. These are Nobel laureates, heads of state ministries, CEOs and the sort. Invariably, in all cases, these individuals, although possessing a PhD in a science or a highly technical area, had become much more. One notable PhD in neuroscience, whom I had come to know as a corporate board member when I was on, on the corporate boards, Worked also as an he was also an accomplished concert violinist and an author. For many years, I worked with a highly sought-after technology scout, helping me find new emerging medical technologies around the world. His PhD was in biophysics, but he was also an accomplished jazz musician. 
another novelist, another was a novelist and a playwright. And the list goes on and on. Often these Ijevils were people of deep faith also. They were truly Renaissance people. These leaders were so broad in their interest and knowledge that they were able to use this ancillary knowledge to facilitate connections with people of influence and wealth who could listen to their ideas, create more connections, access to capital and endorsements. In short, they facilitated the pathway for your ideas into societal adoption. These individuals, by virtue of their breadth of knowledge, were able to create common dialogue, understand other points of view, operate within foreign cultures, and see solutions from a myriad of perspectives. Not solely because of their high level of technological expertise within their chosen field, but because of their continued learning and love of knowledge beyond their field. Now, while I was a PhD grad student, I had the opportunity to take a course in the history of innovation. It was taught by a physicist and a historian. He explained the iterative process of how technological innovation goes on to affect societal change, which in turn sparks new areas of technology, which once again affects societal changes, and so on, and so on, and so on. Understanding that harnessing the power of your technological knowledge is a massive responsibility for you and you must consider the societal consequences. Every new, powerful, disruptive technology has consequences, both good and challenging. Examples abound, nuclear energy, social media, fossil fuels, cell phones, just to name a tiny few. All have improved our lives tremendously, but also resulted in unintended consequences. So where does one go to think beyond your PhD? And what you might do about it. Now, this may seem a bit odd. Me, a man of science, talking to a STEM-based audience in a polytechnic university, but I am a true advocate of liberal arts education. Over the past decade or so, the education field has focused on the STEM fields at the expense of liberal arts education. While declining funding sources, the competition for students, skyrocketing cost of a college education, and a focus almost solely on preparing one to enter the workforce, universities and even high schools and middle schools everywhere are shedding liberal arts courses <clears throat> or dropping classes in non-STEM areas. I believe in the long run this will turn out to actually hurt STEM-trained individuals from achieving their leadership positions, which are necessary to responsibly adopt innovation. Understanding the context surrounding society's adoption of innovation comes from looking at the liberal arts. To help you better understand what skills come from an excursion into the liberal education, I'll lift a quote from a short article that appeared in a fairly recent publication about higher education. And I quote, a liberal education prepares graduates not for their first job, but for their fourth. It's not job preparation, but preparation for life. These 21st century skills include critical and creative thinking, cognitive flexibility, integrative and reflective thinking, social skills, ethical reasoning, and inter- and cross-cultural competence. In short, these are the skills possessed by some of the most successful leaders in our world, people who have truly made a difference in improving our lives. This set of knowledge is not so much concerned about what we are thinking about, but rather how we might think about those things. It was some referred to today as metacognition, thinking about thinking. The lessons learned from the stories of Greek mythology, the great comedies and tragedies of classic literature, the emotional impact of a musical passage or a visual image, all offer lessons in how we can relate to and understand the context in which our new technology must exist to be successful. Now, I'm not suggesting that at this stage that you go back and get a liberal arts degree, but rather to encourage you to continue your learning and develop a broad awareness of the many societal factors that can either leverage your deep expertise into some great success or relegate it to a mere scientific curiosity. Therefore, I will conclude with some specific suggestions for our newly minted PhDs. 
Firstly, as you move forward in your lives and continually deepen your technological knowledge, try also to seize opportunities to acquire knowledge outside of your current field. Travel, read outside of your field, attend the arts, listen to music, learn another language. Now this may sound like your therapist just telling you to relax and enjoy life, but my advice is to really get into these things with the goal of acquiring new knowledge and perhaps even being accomplished at it. Secondly, remember that many studies have shown that most people make decisions based on beliefs and biases rather than facts. You, on the other hand, are trained in evidence-based decision-making based on the facts. But you will find, as you move forward in life, that the challenge of getting an audience to accept your facts and ideas depends upon your ability to understand and address their beliefs and biases. Facts rarely can convince someone with deeply held beliefs to change their mind. If you're going to be persuasive, you need to have a firm grasp on the context in which your proposal is being considered, often referred to as the surround. Your ability to see the surround and therefore the basis for their underlying beliefs comes from looking beyond the PhD. Finally, I've learned that everyone has a story that may be of value to you, no matter who they are or what position they hold. Be a good listener. Use your breadth of knowledge to explore common ground with these individuals. Make friends, develop true intellectual relationships. Encourage them to open up to you about how they see you, your work, and the world. Make the phrase, thank you, a common part of your language. As you know, by going through this PhD experience at NJIT, you did not do it alone. Family, friends, teachers, lab techs, maintenance people, administrative staff, faculty, all had a role in playing your, in, in, in your success. I think I've captured them all, is that? And this will continue to be the case for your entire career. So, soon, you will have bestowed upon you the degree of lover of knowledge. Take that seriously. Don't exist slowly within the boundaries of your academic field. Continue to look beyond the PhD. I thank you for your attention and I wish you the best of success in your lives. Thank you, Dr. DiCaprio, for this interesting and enlightening presentation. It has been a tradition that uh, during the PhD uh, conferral of degrees every year, we also confer the Hashimoto Prize. I'd like to invite Dr. Yu Win from the Electrical and Computer Engineering Department to tell us what the Hashimoto Prize is and to describe the 2023 winner. Thank you, uh, Dean Kam. Uh, this evening, we are honored to uh, recognize all of our doctoral students. But first, I would like to recognize the Hashimoto Prize Award. Over a distinguished lifetime, Kashu Hashimoto uh, gathered more than 1,000 patents and applications related to his invention of tele, uh, telephone answering machine and other technical devices in electronics and telecommunication. In 1994, New Jersey Institute of Technology award Dr. Hashimoto the Doctor of Science Honoris Causa. Before his death, he established the Hashimoto Endowment, including the annual award of the Hashimoto Prize to a doctoral candidate in electrical engineering, who has demonstrated a high achievement and promise in the field. On behalf of the nomination by the Committee of Faculty in the Electrical and Computer Engineering Department and the Vice Provost of Graduate Studies and the Dean of the Newark 
College of Engineering. We would like to award the Hashimoto Prize to Ravi Tejat Vebula. Congratulations. Please come to forward to be recognized. At this time, I invite Dr. Uh, Satiras Chiavas, Vice Provost for Graduate Studies, for the presentation uh, of candidates. We now turn to the presentation of candidates for earned degrees of the class of 2023. Distinguished guests, faculty, administration, and families, we now the begin the portion of our program in which we honor our newest alumni. Ludwig Alcori. Please wait for a while. In which we honor our newest alumni with the highest degree honor. Whatever path brought you here today, you have fulfilled the degree requirements of a rigorous course of study, and that brands you as professionals in your respective fields. Your NGIT credentials will open new doors to you. Know that you are limited only by your ambition and passion for the work that you will pursue. Regardless of what lies ahead, you are and will always be part of the NGIT family, and we welcome you all with open arms. <laughs> we now move to the presentation of the candidates for doctoral degrees. Will the candidates for all doctoral degrees please rise? These candidates by successfully defending their dissertation work, meet all the requirements for their degrees as specified by graduate studies, college deans and faculty. Congratulations to you all. Would all candidates receiving a doctoral degree come forward with your advisor in order led by an usher on the outside aisle? The first row may approach the stage. The rest of the candidates may be seated. Thank you. Ludwig Alcori. John G. Lissacados.
Michael E. Hanna. Ozan Chakmak. Ravi Teja Velpula. Esma Chetinkaya. Mang Tao. Apurva and Limaye Naftali Ehrenberg. Ashley Joyce Mont Johnson Zane Siddiqui. Jin Fan Jitendra Anil Kewal Ramani. Boran Wong Mohab A. Hussein. Fatame Mohammadi Shakiba
Pa kwesi a fear esabondin. Anushreya Ghosh. Wen G. Re Shwe Liu. Ching Chuan Ma. Suman Jaiswal Abhishek Mukherjee Chang Long Li Alina Emilianova. Gulanai Gunersh Doajan Yilmaz. Nan Tawat Muan Pao Pong Sanga Celine Kim Andrew N. House Dong Yu Lee Ida Lopez Ruiz
Baron Theoman. Efstathios S. Paphiakis. Matthew B. Cooper. Ire fetalo a joke sado. John T. Stephan. Christopher M. Bolton. Adrian Pierre Genou. Nian Leo Audrey Biondi Kellogg. Subash Kusum Ray Christine Ellen Sosiak. Jie Do Gadi B. Eshun. Daniel Kasungi Isika
Mohammed Saiful Islam. Indrani Gupta. Chen Wu. Ali Hassani. Subrashish Chakraborty. Binan Gu Connor J. Robertson. Sohel Sagafi Hassam al-Din Mohammadi. Yasser Abdullah. Firas Georges Nilofar Agayibiani Che Yuan Li Yi 
Ya Jun Li. Mojtaba Zahari. T. Kim Fung Lai. Raina Elizabeth Samuel Pailene Iranja Xiao Ching Zhang Esther Zapori All right, uh, please join me in congratulating our newest doctoral graduates. Congratulations. <laughs> While this day and this ceremony focuses on our graduates, we want to be sure to recognize and express gratitude for the tremendous support these students have received from their loved ones, those who provided emotional, intellectual, and even financial support to enable them to reach this point. Graduates, will you please stand and join me in recognizing those not wearing caps and gowns today, the parents, grandparents, spouses, siblings, children, and friends who have sustained you on your journey. Thank you. Graduates, upon completion of your degrees, NJIT is now your alma mater. At this time, would everyone please rise for the singing of the alma mater by the NJIT Capella student group, Gigabeats. One, two, three. 
to alma mater fair and great our voices now we raise our gratitude we demonstrate her steady torch we praise her challenge on us ever falls a world of knowledge calls in heart and mind our trust will bind to our NJIT we'll hold her memory ever dear her spirit will revere to her we promise loyalty our own NJ. Oh, please be seated. I know graduates and faculty, you have been sitting here for a while now, and you are yearning to get out of here. So I promise you this won't take very long, but I do want to say a few words. Uh, first of all, let me ask uh, the graduate a question. Uh, how many of you, this is your first degree? This is your first degree from NJIT. All right. So not everybody raise your hand. So who, how many of you, this is your second degree from NJIT? Oh, okay. And then how many of you, this is your third degree from NJIT? Congratulations, wow. <laughs> you must love NJIT a lot. I love you too. <laughs> so graduates, today is your day. Come on, this is your day. What you have achieved is extraordinary. And before I go any further, I want you to look around this arena. Congratulate those near you. Come on, go on, do that. All right. Now, also, I see the audience here in the, uh, in the arena. See if you can find your family and friends. Shouldn't be too difficult. There are not too many of them here, okay? Uh, and look at the pride emanating from their faces. Look at their pride. You find them? All right, good. Now, keep that in your memory. Take, take it all in, take it all in and store this moment in your memory. Do not ever forget this, this time because this is really critical. All right, good. So class of 2023, when you walk out of this arena, you should feel incredibly proud what you have accomplished earning a PhD from NJIT did not come easily. I know many of you spend countless hours in your computer lab, in your office, at home, you know, doing research. And you choose to do it in NJIT, one of 35 polytechnic universities in the United States. And you completed a very rigorous curriculum research here at NJIT regardless of what your major is. You demonstrate the ability to work, do original work, to learn, to collaborate, and to solve difficult, difficult problems. You develop those capabilities by being challenged while you were at NJIT, spending countless hours doing your research especially, laboring over difficult projects and problem sets listening intently and questioning insightfully in your classroom and also in your research lab. So as you now venture into the next phase of your life, remember the following. Embrace the opportunities that await and use your talents to pursue goals that will benefit others and improve our world. Trust me, when you help somebody succeed, you will be successful as well. Understand that you are building upon a foundation that was created by previous generations of Highlanders and that you are contributing to the great legacy of this fine institution, the finest in the line, in my opinion. You agree? Yes. Now, also appreciate that you have not accomplished anything alone. Reflect upon the help you receive 
from others throughout your journey and make it a priority to thank those who have supported your effort, especially those who are here supporting you, and encourage your aspiration. So, we're almost done. Graduates, please now rise. I want you to participate in three commencement traditions. Some of you have been here and done this before, so you should know the drill. First, the conferral of your degrees. This is important because without this, your PhD degree is not valid. <laughs> On behalf of the members of the Board of Trustees, I congratulate you. Congratulations. So, again, this is very important. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the state of New Jersey and delegated by the Board of Trustees of the New Jersey Institute of Technology, and upon recommendation of the faculty of the university, I do hereby confer upon each of you the PhD degree to which you are entitled, together with all the rights, all the honors, all the privileges there unto appertaining. Graduates of the class of 2023 PhD, congratulations! You have a lot of fan here. You have, you have a lot of fan here. That's good. So second, I guess you know, your tassel is moved from the right to the left as you receive your PhD degree. And it will always remain on the left closest to your heart as an NJIT alumni. So, oh, yeah, go right. Congratulations. So you are... Some of you are first-time alumni, some of you are second-time, some of you are third-time alumni. Whichever one you are, when our development and alumni office call, pick up the phone, all right? <laughs> so, uh, I would like to then go to the, uh, third, the third tradition, okay? And this is the final tradition. Uh, I will remain, uh, all the graduates who remain um, in your, well, first of all, before we do the third, uh, tradition, there's some housekeeping rule I wanted to say, okay? The, the first one, okay, is when, when this ends, you remain in your seat, you let the bagpipers leave, the stage party, and the faculty, once they pass, then you can be escorted by your row from by the usher. Okay, remember, that's the housekeeping rule. So, here's a third, here's a third uh, tradition. This has to do with tossing your cap. You've done this before, either here or elsewhere. I hope you label your cap so that you can find it later on. <laughs> so, and now, I invite you on the count of three to toss your cap as you begin your next, another chapter of your lives. One, two, three. Congratulations.